Hamilton campus. And uh, I am an admissions representative there. I graduated with my MDiv back in May of 2020. And I am uh, just happy to be here and happy to answer any questions you might have. Thanks, Jordan. Uh, my name is Haley. I'm an admissions counselor for the Charlotte location, but really can answer any question. Really, all of us can. Um, and yeah, I have not uh, started my degree yet because I just finished one last year, uh, my master's last year at another school. And so I'm giving myself a break before I enroll again, but plan too soon. Oh, and you're recently married. That's a big deal. Yes, recently married. That's what brought me up to the Charlotte area. My husband's a pastor here. Thank you guys for the introduction. So here's the thing. We want to make sure that everybody has beneficial time here. And we always like to do this a couple of times a year. Uh, because, you know, sometimes, you know, you go online or you send an email or you're on our chat bot or whatever on the website. Uh, we wanted to be able to avail ourselves to answer any questions that you may have about our admissions process. Um, if they're truly specific questions, like if you've already submitted an application and things like that, we have another way that we can be able to answer those questions for you, uh, because sometimes that information can be um, more sensitive and there are things like FERPA that are at play that we wanna make sure that we're not violating anything. Um, so that's pretty much the ground rules and um, I'll let uh, some of our advisors here uh, be able to answer any questions whenever you guys are ready. Yeah, and I'm gonna, just on that note, Jonathan, I'm gonna put the email address for our admissions office in the chat. So if you have further questions today, like. Um, that are more personal, or if when you leave the webinar, you realize you have more questions, you can just email our office directly and we'll be happy to touch base with you. So I'm going to drop that in the chat momentarily. Also on our website, um, you can also book an appointment with us. So if you, if phone call um, or an email is not your thing and you'd like to have a Zoom call that's one-on-one, -on -one, uh, you're more than welcome to set one up there as well. We can also put the link there. So someone can kick it off if they'd like, if you have any specific admissions questions um, regarding a program of interest or the application itself, Gordon Conwell related, anything, we're ready. Okay, well, I'll, I guess I'll start. Uh, I'm looking at doing uh, counseling starting next fall. Um, and uh, first of all, what's the deadline for the application for next fall? Yes. So are you interested in the Masters of Counseling um, at the Hamilton location or at the Charlotte location? I'm looking at both. Um, both are KCREP accredited, correct? That is correct. correct. Okay. Yeah, that's that's the important thing for me. Uh, well, one of the important things. Um, and the Hamilton one is on campus only. Is that correct? That is correct. There are a couple courses that you could take technically remotely. So if um, you mentioned you're in Minnesota, is that correct? That is correct, yes. Yeah, so for example, if you wanted to take a couple of classes, I think you can take up to five remotely in Mako from Hamilton, but the bulk majority of that degree does need to be completed in person at the Hamilton campus. Okay. So up to five counseling classes and then the entirety of the Bible and theology component can be completed remotely. So up to five remotely for that are counseling and then the biblical. That's correct. Yep. So if for some reason or another, you can't start right away in Hamilton, um, you have to tie up loose ends in Minnesota, then you'd be welcome to take a, uh, that amount of classes from your home. Okay. And then the, uh, um, the Christian counseling one in Charlotte, that's hybrid, correct? It is. And so the way it's set up is it's a cohort based program. So it's got a three, four year or five year cohort route um, or degree route. So what that would look like if it's a three year route for you to finish the program, it would be coming to campus one weekend, once a month. Um, and that, so that would be a requirement for one class a semester. Um, so really, when we say the program is set up 70% remote and 30% in person, that 30% in person is the one week in a month. Okay, and that's for the three year, 
correct? That's for the three years. So the four year will look really similar. Um, the five year track is where it starts to get a little different. Um, what that means more so is that probably once every three semesters, you'd be coming in person every weekend. Um, but two semesters, you probably wouldn't come to campus at all. But it's because you'd be taking one or two classes at a time. And then the three year, um, is that are the classes you're doing online, is it kind of go as you can? Because I'm assuming I'm going to be working full time as well. Yeah, that's a great question. So all of our biblical foundations courses, and this goes for any of our degrees, just for everybody here. Um, those are like theology one, theology two, exploring the Old Testament, exploring the New Testament, which are requirements for all of our full degree programs. All of those can be done asynchronous, meaning that they can be done at your own pace with pre-recorded lectures. You'd still have deadlines for courses and such, um, but that's an option. So if uh, in the cohort-based program, you have to take the classes that are required of you um, every semester because you're traveling within the same group and you're all taking the same courses. So one of those classes may be asynchronous that semester. Um, one of them may be digital live, and then the other may be in person. So it's kind of the... Christian counseling degree is a little bit more of an in-person component. So we normally recommend if you live on the east side of the country, it might work for you. Um, so Mako might be your bet if you're going to still be working full time and tying up things before you start taking classes in person. Mako is the? The Hamilton. The Hamilton, okay. Yep. So just, just why is it called Mako then? Mm-hmm. Great question. So the KCREP or the accreditation and the way it looks is that each state has like different verbiage of what their degree program can be called. So um, I live in the Bible Belt, so it's okay if it's a Christian counseling degree. Um, however, it's the same contents uh, if you were to travel up north, but for their accreditation um, and for the way they're licensed as a program, it's called Masters of Counseling, but it is biblical foundations and actually has more biblical courses than even the MACC. Okay, so I could be fully licensed in, in basically any state with a Christian counseling degree and, and the regular counseling degree, correct? Correct. I think KCREP is licensed in every single state in the country besides two. Um, I don't know them off the top of my head. It's on their website. I want to say Texas is one of them. Um, but other than that, yes, you should be in the clear. If I can just chime in really quick, uh, if any for Brendan and anyone else in states outside Massachusetts or North Carolina, you're also encouraged to do research on your own as far as to what the requirements are for the state that you're seeking to be licensed in, because sometimes there can be slight discrepancies between states on what licensure can look like. And that's something that you can obviously discuss with our faculty, but the faculty won't be as familiar with the licensure requirements in particular states. So if you are in uh, any one of the states, we strongly encourage you to also do some research on your own. You can also bring what you find to our faculty when you become a, should you become a counseling student, but just want to make sure it's clear too that you also do the research on your own because the requirements can look different state to state. Great question. Then I guess my one other question is, what are the deadlines for next fall for both Charlotte and Hamilton? They will probably look a little similar to what they were last fall. Um, give me one minute, because they're not posted yet. Um, however, so the, was... you can go ahead, Jordan. Oh, no, no, no. Go ahead, Haley. I was just going to say, <laughs> so focused on trying to get students in for the spring term. I know. Uh, um, but you're in the right track, Brennan, of thinking ahead right now. So uh, the MACO, which is the Hamilton Counseling Program, that application deadline is July 1st. Um, and for MACC, it's July 15th. And the reason being is because it's a two-tiered admissions process. Um, our counseling programs are and so their dates are earlier than our other degree programs because once you're full once you submit your application by the date we'll be reviewing it um, and then you'll be invited back for an interview with our counseling faculty um, and then do you require any tests like uh, uh, mats or anything like that uh, no test requirements okay so it's just essay application 
of your resume. Yeah, so it's uh, your application form. And this is also for any degree program. Um, you will have to fill out an application form. There will be three references, a pastoral reference, a professional reference, or if you are a recent college graduate, maybe a professor can do that instead. Uh, also a friend reference. And key for those three is that none of them can be family members. So those three references. Then there will be two essays, an autobiography and a personal statement. Um, both of those, they don't have to be war and peace. It's only about a one to two page uh, single space. And you'll see that on the um, application when you pull it up there, all these requirements will be listed. Uh, and then if you're an international student, your TOEFL score. Um, and then there is uh, also, if you are an MDiv student, a part of your pastoral recommendation will be a church endorsement. And that is, uh, again, that's only for MDiv students, but that's an additional step. And that's nothing too big. It's just part of the pastoral reference that we receive. Okay. And I guess I'm thinking of one more question. So you offer, you could do a counseling and MDiv at the same time. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, if, if you were to do that, if I were to do that with, with the, the three-year cohort in Charlotte, how, how long would that take and what would the... Uh, what would that look like? Would that be able to be done online or would that need to be on campus for that? So unfortunately that uh, route for MDiv and a uh, counseling degree is actually only offered at Hamilton. And I don't know how long, I mean, I don't know the year requirement, I guess it would come out probably about three years if it was full-time um, because it's, I can't remember how many credit hours at the moment, 80, 70 something. Yeah. Actually, the MDiv may go, if you do that at Hamilton, it will probably make it four years. So oh, okay. because you have, yeah, because you have um, three, that's typically, the MDiv typically at Hamilton takes about three years. And then you've also got the, the MAKO requirements and the added internship. So if you're taking three to four classes a semester, you're probably going to end up doing about four years for the MAKO MDiv, the dual degree. And again, that's also dependent on how many classes you're taking. Like if you are thinking about doing a dual degree program and you're also working or you have outside commitments that could slow you down a little bit. So that would be like if, if school is your main main focus, uh, probably would take you about four years. OK, I think those are um, my, my questions. Great, thank you, Brendan. Jonathan, it looked like you were saying something, but you're muted. How about now? <laughs> Can you hear me <laughs> uh, We got some questions in the chat. So um, Lydia's asking us, uh, during her internships at Gordon Conwell, is there flexibility to complete my internships in an art therapy related field? Yes, I see that you're interested in the Charlotte location. Um, yes, there is flexibility for that. Uh, something to keep in mind is we don't have specific routes for art therapy or um, like family therapy right now. Uh, so it is just mental health counseling. That's, that's our um, requirement for this program. However, as long as it's a... Um, it's a program that is accredited um, and, a way, and licensed in a way for you to gain uh, hours towards licensure. It's okay if it's in an art therapy setting, um, and that might be a wonderful route for you to still get the experience that you're looking for. Um, but it is something to discuss with the counseling faculty when you're in the interview so that they know that's something you're looking at. Awesome. I have another question in the chat. Um, this individual is wondering what it looks like to begin um, fully online and what it would look like for them to be able to transfer to fully in person. Well, I can talk to you about the transfer process if you're fully online and you decide to then be in person, especially if you wanted to switch campuses. You know, it might look a little bit differently if for currently, I know all of our online students are going through the Charlotte campus, but if you are thinking about switching to Hamilton and you are 
Um, if you're still in the application process, that's a very simple thing. You just simply need to update your application and you can reach out to the admissions staff, uh, our emails in the chat, and we can help you update your application. If you're already a student, uh, feel free to reach out to us as well. We'll just have you uh, fill out something called a change of status application, which will help get your file transferred from one campus to another. And as for what it looks like to start as an online student or just to be an online student, since a lot of our programs off, are offered 100% remote. Um, so we have three avenues for you to take courses. You can take courses in person, which we've talked about, um, and if you are a student at Gordon-Conwell, keep in mind, you can do that at any campus. Um, people often don't take that option, but if you would like to, um, if you're a regular Charlotte student, but if you wanna take a week intensive at Boston, you are more than welcome to do so. Um, as long as it can fit within your degree requirements and you talk about it with your advisor. Um, as for being an online student, the two routes that we have, or not really routes, but two options we have for your courses is uh, Digital Live, which you might have seen everywhere on our website, um, and Asynchronous, or might be called Simlink. Um, so I had mentioned this before, but Asynchronous is where it is a pre-recorded lecture, something you would go on and watch, um, and it would inform you for your assignments, and so you can complete those uh, at the times and deadlines specified by a syllabus. Um, and for digital live, you are, are logging on as the class is happening in person. So I love this option because you are getting the exact same degree that anybody else would if they came to uh, school in person. So you'd be logging on at the time specified. You're having real in time uh, interactions with your classmates and the professor. Um, and it would just be all remote from the comfort of your home or wherever you're taking courses. So a lot of our classes are offered digital live, meaning you can come in person. So if you were a Charlotte student um, and you were digital live and maybe you lived in Raleigh or you didn't make it that week and you want to study at home and log on at the same time, you are more than welcome to do so as well. So it's a great option. Um, it does mean you have to be available at the time specified for whatever course you register for. So something to keep in mind if you are overseas, something to keep in mind if you are in a different time zone, um, make sure that it lines up with your schedule. The last thing I, will, I don't know if we were able to kind of dive into this, but the last thing we wanna make sure that if you are going from international and you're looking to come to the States to take classes, making sure that you are acquiring the proper visa to be able to do your studies here in the United States. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we can speak with you more specifically about as you go through the, uh, as you go through the application process. All right, we've got another great question here. Can someone provide a quick overview of the language Hebrew or Greek requirements for M Div degree. I know who that one's coming to. Our resident theologian, Jordan. Oh, I'm happy to help with that question. Uh, so I am, like I said earlier, I'm an MDiv uh, alum. So I went through these language requirements. So it can be a little intimidating, but uh, it, it's as my one of my professors used to say, the juice is worth the squeeze. It's a pretty unbelievable feeling. Uh, to sit down and start reading the New Testament in the original in the original language or the Old Testament in, in the biblical Hebrew. So the way that it works is for MDiv, uh, you will be taking two semesters worth of both Greek and Hebrew. Uh, and it doesn't matter which one you take first. You could take Hebrew first. You could take Greek first. Um, I started with Greek, uh, and that was just better for my schedule, for my class schedule. I didn't feel like a you know, I was disadvantaged in any way by doing that. Uh, so it really doesn't matter. It's completely up to you which one you take first. Uh, so you will take two semesters of your language. You will begin the exegesis. Pro so as an MDiv student, you take the, for example, we'll take Greek. You take Greek one, you take Greek two, and then you also take a class called Interpreting the New Testament, which is kind of like an introduction to exegesis in uh, the New Testament of the Bible, and those are classes, Greek too, and interpreting the New Testament are all stepping stones to then be able to take exegesis of certain books in the New Testament. So for every, for each language, uh, part of biblical studies, you do two semesters of the language, 
So Hebrew one, Hebrew two, Greek one, Greek two. Then you take the interpret the interp class. So interpreting the Old Testament or interpreting the New Testament. And then finally, you finish by taking two exegesis courses in each language. So for New Testament, for example, I took exegesis in Revelation and exegesis in the Gospel of John. And those classes were intensive studies of those books in the Bible using the original language and then writing an exegesis paper. So, of course, you are more than welcome to go beyond uh, Hebrew 1 and Hebrew 2 or Greek 1 and Greek 2. There's intermediate Hebrew, intermediate Greek, but those are not requirements. But if you are thinking about going on and doing further studies, or if you just want to burrow down, some people love languages. Uh, for others of us, it's a huge sweat. So it really just depends on what you want to do. But a lot of students do like to use their electives to burrow down further into the languages. And uh, like I said, they are intense. Um, there's no getting around it, but there is just something really beautiful about being able to sit down and read John. For example, the Gospel of John, the Greek there is is known to be more easy for beginners. And you will be surprised at just how quickly, just a few weeks into the class, you can begin to pick out words in the New Testament. And then when the time comes to actually sit down and start reading a passage, uh, it's in, it's incredible. So, um, so I hope that clarifies, but if uh, I realized I kind of went in a few circles there, but if you uh, have further questions or would like me to elaborate further, just let me know. And let me just publicly thank you, Jordan, for encouraging messages. I'm currently in a Hebrew class right now. Uh, and, and Jordan's right. They are, it is intense. But after about five weeks, um, you're actually able to, to read uh, a language in which you had no uh, familiarity with before. And it's an incredible feeling uh, to be able to know that you've acquired a new skill that's going to help you to be able to help others. Uh, understand our faith and make it clear. Um, another question. Thank you guys for being so wonderful with giving us questions. Um, this one's from Lydia. Can the program through the Charlotte campus be completed completely online? Lydia, I'm not sure what what program if you're, if you're speaking of. She's the, re referring to the MACC. All right. Yeah, just in uh, previously, she had mentioned that it um, unfortunately cannot be done online as of right now. I'm giving that qualifier because who knows what's going to happen. But the way the program is accredited right now, we are you get accredited for certain formats of learning. And so our program right now is accredited for a hybrid model, meaning we can't offer it fully remote um, because it would exceed our accreditation and what we're allowed to do. Um, that doesn't mean that in the future we won't move towards fully being accredited to do it online. Um, but right now it is hybrid. It's also just kind of a requirement. Um, it's a requirement we saw needed at the time. Um, so it, it's been helpful for a lot of students, but like I said, it can be quite difficult if you don't live on the East Coast. Um, the hybrid setting, uh, it's that 70% um, remote and 30% in-person requirement. So what that really looks like, as I had mentioned was, um, coming to campus once a month, uh, once a month, and it would be on a weekend. So what that means is you're taking a weekend in in intensive once a month. So it probably would be about four or five classes a semester, but you'd be doing that throughout your whole time through the three-year program if you choose to take the three-year route. So it can be quite a lot of travel if you don't live locally. Um, so we recommend that you kind of find a program that's closer to you uh, if that's one that you're interested in. There was a question that also came in. Just want to make sure I don't yeah. pass. It says, do you have any recommendations for older students who have been out of academics for several years? And that's a great question. Uh, I just want to point out that um, people that come to seminary are of, uh, they're of various ages and life stages. Uh, for example, I lived on the dorm here in a dorm here in Hamilton campus, and probably my closest friend on the dorm was a gentleman who was in his 50s. He had been through two or three career changes uh, before coming to seminary. So he was in a, we were just in different life stages because I had only been out of college for a few years, but we really clicked and just became good friends and, and walked through those 
three years of seminary together. Um, so he did just fine. And uh, so I would just encourage those who might be a little nervous about having been out of school for a while uh, to coming back. Um, here's a couple of things to just keep in mind. Uh, number one, that there are many students like yourself that have been out of school for a long time and are coming back into it. So you wouldn't necessarily be like one of the only ones. There are several. Um, and also I might recommend meeting with uh, the registration office at your campus to do some academic advising. At least uh, when I was a student, uh, I met with the registration office just about every semester to help plan my schedule because I was working three jobs and I had a lot of commitments and I wasn't sure how I'm gonna be able to balance school, work, everything else. And so to just be able to bounce some ideas off somebody, that knew the classes and what they entailed was very helpful. And so I might recommend uh, only doing, you know, starting low on the courses that you take, maybe only taking just a few if you're a little nervous, and then you can always add on more classes as the semesters go by. Um, at the same time, uh, there's usually about a week, the first week of class, uh, you have about a five day window to drop a class without uh, incurring a tuition penalty. So you could always sign up for three or four classes or even five uh, if you really want to go for it. I never took five classes. That was just too much, way too much. But uh, you could sign up for as many as you want. You could go to the first two classes or sometimes if it meets multiple times in a week or just the first class, you could see how it looks uh, and you could decide, you know, uh, I think I'll drop this or actually I want to keep going. So those are just a couple of pointers, I guess, that I'd, I'd throw out there. But um, yeah, so. Yeah, I would say also just add to that, most of the students I get are not like these young bucks out of college who are just ready right after their bachelor's. Honestly, it's people that are already in ministry doing work um, that are ready just to get further education. So don't let it be intimidating in any way. Um, and depending on what campus you go through, if you're an online learner, we also have students who, or we also have uh, student success representatives who help you plan out your semester and they keep in contact with you about registration and what course might be best to take next. And that is a model that we're looking to, to spread across all campuses. So um, it ends up being incredibly helpful to talk with somebody, but registration is more than equipped to answer those questions for you right now. So you'll be ready and equipped in every, every way. All right, Karen. I saw, yeah. The cohort through Charlotte. You're getting all the questions, aren't you there? I Haley? know. I know. That's a good one. That's a great question. I've never had anybody ask me that question. Um, so right now we don't offer cohorts for any other programs except LGM, which are our Latino and Global Ministries, our Doctorate of Ministry, and um, the counseling program. However, we are starting uh a route called hubs, which is just kind of meaning that people in your area that are also uh, Gordon-Conwell students, alumni, you can all get connected with them. And so that's something that we're trying to kick off in the coming semesters. Um, so you might end up finding people that are in the MATS with you or already in MDiv, and maybe they can talk with you. But either way, if they're students in any other program, you a lot of you will be taking the same biblical foundations courses. Um, so you still get connected in that way. Um, also, as an online student, you still have the opportunity to be a part of a soul care group, um, which is an incredible way to get connected with other students, and you would find other students who are probably in the same program as you, but a soul care group is kind of like a Bible study you'd have at your church, um, but really what it looks like is getting together once a month with other people in seminary, talking about what you're learning, how it's impacting your soul, for lack of a better way to explain it. Uh, that's really what it is and how you're applying it and, and learning things, uh, deeply learning. And so I'd say it's a it's still a lot of points of connection, even if you're online. And I'd, I'd like to add, um, when it comes to the MATS and possibly the MDiv, um, if I'm advising a student on this, um, I would I would want a person if they're ultimately looking to be have an MDiv to just be on the MDiv track um, because there's a there's 
always going to be a possibility that you could take a class in the MATS that may not transfer to the MDiv track. And we don't want to waste your time and we don't want to waste your, your resources. So we would prefer to just have you find a way to have you on the MDiv track so that you can earn the degree that you're ultimately looking for. So that's my two cents on that. All right, another great question here. As people who are experienced uh, with this program, what would you say is the biggest benefit of pursuing a counseling degree with a Christ-centered perspective? You want me to go, Jordan? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's actually the way our counseling program is set up is unique in that um, with that biblical foundations courses that are to start with and, and to integrate throughout the program. What's really neat is what I've heard a lot of students say is you can see how the Bible is lining up with what you're learning in your play therapy course and your helping relationships course. And that just goes to show you how God's hand is in the redemptive work of counseling. So it's, it's very moving as somebody who's in the program, but it's also very moving as somebody who will later receive that counseling. So I would say um, it's one of my favorite approaches. There are other counseling um, programs that are strictly biblical with no, um, no mental health counseling focus, meaning that they're not doing uh, different therapies that would, that would later be found in any kind of secular counseling. And I really think that integrative approach is, is where um, we see a lot of redemptive work happening um, because it's both working with the gospel. So I'd say that it's, it's one of the best approaches to counseling. Um, it's also really enriching for you just so you're growing in your faith as you're in preparing yourself as you're about to, to point others back to Christ through counseling later on as a licensed counselor. So it's a really, really great approach. Um, it's why pretty much, it's why all of our degrees have these biblical foundations courses. Because if you did a practical ministry degree, like the Christian ministry or the master of Christian ministry, it's really a practical degree. And it's great to learn how to practically do ministry, but you need those biblical foundations as well to really understand the why um, behind your faith and what you're teaching others. Yeah, if I can just chime in or just add something briefly uh, mm -hmm. at the from the Hamilton side, I'm just going to put this in the chat. We did an admissions web, webinar, um, gosh, it was a while ago now, towards the end of 2020, called Answering the Call to Counseling with two of our alums and Dr. Karen Mason, who's the head of the counseling program at Hamilton. And one of the things that was pretty neat was the alums that we were, that we interviewed were alumni who kind of worked in more secular settings, but really uh, were not working in within the church or um, in Christian practices, so to speak. But we're seeing clients, or um, and it was neat to see just how the their education at the seminary prepared them to then kind of cross that so-called divide. So let me just uh, drop that in the chat, and maybe it will be just helpful um, just to hear from some alum from the program talk about how it equipped them for their current callings. One of the other things that I love about our counseling degrees is that it makes you a counseling theologian or theologian counselor. Um, it, really, it really puts you in a position to where, especially if you are hired by a church or something like that, um, it widens your scope on things that you can be involved in because you will have a very solid foundation um, in practical, practical things, Christian thought, um, uh, theology courses. I mean, it, it really, we, we have tried really hard to make sure that we're not just tacking on Christian to a degree. No, we, we wanting thoughtful, uh, Bible-centered counselors that can speak on theology as well counseling. So that's something that I would, I would also say to that as well. All right. I got another great couple. Man, I love it, guys. These are great questions. Broadly speaking, would love to hear any thoughts on why Gordon Conwell said another way, what are unique Gordon Conwell attributes? 
I can kick us off on that one. Um, so one of the things I think that makes Gordon Conwell unique is the multi-denominational environment. So Gordon Conwell is not affiliated with one particular denomination. At the same time, we're not a non-denominational school. We would say we're interdenominational and that there's students across the four campuses and online from over 80 denominations. And um, but we're all united uh, by our basic commitment to the authority of scripture. So if you were in a classroom at Gordon Conwell, you would probably be in there with students who come down on a variety of stances and secondary issues, but ultimately believe in the authority of the Bible. And that's the starting place. And that's where we all go back to. So you'd probably be in class with Baptists, Presbyterians, non-denominational, charismatic, uh, denominations that you've never heard of before. At least I had never heard of, you know, so many denominations before I came here. Um, and so I think it's really fun to be able to, you know, learn from brothers and sisters in different denominations. It's also a good way to um, just be in an environment where we can practice charity with one another when we disagree. Uh, another characteristic is that the seminary has over 50 countries uh, among, represented amongst the student body. So even if you are an online student, you will probably have students in that class that might be zooming in from somewhere around the world. Um, and if you come to one of the campuses in person, there will be students that come from all over the world. And that's just kind of one of the neat things about Gordon Conwell, because it's been around now for, for quite some time that it's gained a reputation that students are coming from overseas to study with us. And so it uh, creates a pretty fun learning dynamic. So those are just two things. Um, and then uh, one thing, too, if I can just talk just because of my own experience at Hamilton, one of the things that I found unique um, being in the Boston area was taking classes with something called the Boston Theological and a Religious Consortium, which is just a big, big phrase to basically say that the religious schools in the Boston area have banded together to allow students to cross register for courses at various institutions. So as a Gordon Conwell student, you could take class at Harvard Divinity, Boston University School of Theology, BC School of Theology, and I really enjoyed the opportunity. I took advantage of that and took a class my last year down at Harvard. And so just being able to go down and spend the day in Cambridge and take a course there uh, was really, really fun. And it was definitely something that was unique, so. And I'll, I'll speak to that as well. Um, the Charlotte campus also has a Carolina Theological Consortium, which is great. So. Like Jordan said, it allows for cross registration and library privileges across uh, different schools. So Gordon Conwell obviously reformed the Reformed Theological Seminary, Erkstein, yes, and uh, Seminary School of Missions for CIU, Columbia International University. So that's really great. You get to meet students um, from other colleges, get to uh, talk with your advisor, see what courses you may take over at those other schools that could still um, add on to your degree and you get credit for your Gordon Conwell degree. So really, really excellent. It expands your knowledge with those library privileges as well. I don't think students take advantage of that enough, but our online library um, has like over 600,000 books, something crazy like that. Uh, but imagine the library privileges if it spanned across schools. So really excellent opportunity there. Um, and something else I'd say that's really unique about Gordon Conwell, you're really just asking us to sell this place, by the way. So you brought this on yourself if you're wondering what a long answer this is. But um, I love this question and I love getting to answer it. And I love hearing how we're multi-denominational, represent all these countries. Um, but something I'd say is unique and it's unique in the recent years is Dr. Sunquest really is taking our school in a wonderful direction. Um, and he means it when he has a mission in mind. And I really appreciate that. And he has made every effort to shape it at the school since he's been here in the last few years. Um, and he is a missiologist at heart. And that's why I feel like I have so much trust in the direction he's headed. He really sees this as a global kingdom and not as Gordon Conwell centric, America centric, I mean, really across the globe. And so that's why we represent so many different countries. That's why um, we've even recently started a Ghana partnership where we allow people over in Ghana to start taking classes with Gordon Conwell at a, re a reduced rate or no rate, um, where they start to get 
are able to start in our certificate program and then later enroll in a full program. So, I mean, it's just, it's really unique. Um, it's something that not a lot of the other schools can say, but I appreciate that he is a missiologist at heart and is shaping our school in that direction. Great, great answers. More than, I mean, you basically said all the stuff I was gonna say. So I don't need to add to anything. So, um, so I was asking about uh, biblical foundational courses. You know, we have uh, just on our site, um, you can look at um, any of our degree, uh, our master's program or MAs, and you'll see things like Old Testament, New Testament, Theology One, Theology Two. Those are going to be courses that are going to be just foundational courses that most of our programs are going to have to take. So that's a really great place to start off with those. And those are all available digital live. They're all available asynchronous. Um, there, there's so many different ways that those classes can, can be taken. So they're all just our, our entry question or our entry courses that at some point in time, most students are going to And if I will just tack on, um, those biblical foundation courses are in our graduate certificate in Christian studies program. And so I encourage you, if you are like, you know what, a full degree is just not my jam right now. I don't think I can do it. Um, that might be a route to start in because all of those courses are going to transfer over into a program you choose. So it's definitely a wonderful place to start. If you're not ready to start with a full MDiv, not ready to start with a full MATS, um, start with the graduate certificate. A lot of our students do it, and it's a really great option. If I can make a just a quick plug as well, if you are interested, uh, we also are doing campus visits currently. We also are doing virtual campus visits. So if you wanna zoom into a class that's happening right now, just to get a small taste of what Gordon Conwell is like, I could put that link in the chat for you, uh, but I would strongly recommend doing that. Um, part of the virtual visit is being able to not only zoom into a class, but also having a Zoom meeting with an admissions representative so you can have more one-on-one -on -one conversation about your particular situation and what your hopes are for the future and uh, learn a little bit more about Gordon Conwell. So just give me a second and I'll put that link in the chat. And while you do that, we'll, that probably might be our last question. Um, Complimentary question, if, you, if you're willing to share, is there something you change about your brain? Now we're talking about all of our, all of our programs, Gordon Conwell. Um, let's see. The only thing I would change would possibly be in our counseling programs to make them more accessible to more people. And we are actively trying to do that. Um, as you know, each state has its own guidelines and what they need. And so we're, we are really working night and day trying to unlock that. But this is something that is uh, a vision of ours to be able to roll it out to more uh, more states, and then, of course, um, eventually being able to be done 100% uh, online. So that is something that we're working towards. So I don't know if I answered that completely. Guys, feel free to interpret it the way you want to interpret, but that's kind of where I was. Great. That really is the only other thing I'd add on um, that we'd like to change and we're working on it, like Jonathan said. Um, and it's something too to keep in mind that even if the program ever did become fully uh, remote, I would still encourage you to take a class in person um, just because counseling is so intimate and taking a class with a cohort, you wanna meet them in person and you wanna have these conversations in person at some point. If you're doing a play therapy class, I mean, don't you wanna like practice and, and you know have those mock play therapy times with you know real toys or whatever it'd be. So I would say that um, even if it does ever become 
fully remote, uh, take a weekend intensive somewhere, um, whether it be in Boston or whether it be in Hamilton or Charlotte, um, I encourage you to still have that in-person component, whatever it means for you. And we know that there's only so much some people can do, but I definitely encourage you just to make sure that you're still getting that, that component. And here at the Hamilton campus, we also have guest housing. So if you are wanting to come up to Massachusetts, uh, we have apartments for students. So you can even get um, that housing taken care of. So you don't have to worry about having a crash with somebody or renting out an Airbnb. You can apply for guest housing during one of the intensive courses. You guys still do the uh, complimentary chowder? <laughs> Oh, did you got to say chowder? I think they, they were doing, uh, so we do have a cafeteria on campus. Uh, we do have, I think every Friday is still chowder day. There, it stopped for a little while, I think because of some shortages, but uh, there is a uh, clam chowder every Friday in the cafeteria. That's a fun fact I did not know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So make sure you come on a Friday, people. <laughs> All right, I think this is going to be our, our last one here. Um, let's see. Oh, why, thank you. Uh, appreciate John's comments on MACC. That's where I started after discussing uh, with a GC grad, but I'm older in Texas. No question. Oh. You're wonderful, Karen. We appreciate y'all being here and asking awesome questions. Yeah, seriously. This hour's gone by so fast. Oh, this is a great question. Does each campus mm -hmm. have a chapel service or broadcast the chapel service in Hamilton? Well, I can answer the Hamilton question on Tuesday and Wednesday, each week during the school year. Uh, from 11.10 to 11.50-ish, 12-ish is chapel. It is not required, but it happens on, on the Hamilton campus and it is also streamed live to Facebook. So if you go to facebook.com slash Gordon Conwell, you can zoom in even now. You don't have to be a student to uh, access the chapel service. So that also could be a good way to just get a little taste of what Gordon Conwell's like. We also sometimes stream some events that happen from on the Hamilton campus uh, to Facebook or to uh, gordonconwell.edu slash live because we have various forums throughout the year where pastors or professors from other schools will come and give a lecture. We had one recently about just, um, there was a forum most recently, the Dean of the campus hosts them. And someone came, a counselor actually came and shared about just changes in marriage and how uh, upcoming shifts and trends and how individuals are approaching that topic and, and how counselors should be informed in talking about marriage. So that was uh, streamed to Facebook. So you can go back and watch the replay. Uh, we had the chapel today. Um, you can watch that. It will be also again tomorrow, um, 1110 to 1150. I'm not sure about other campuses, so maybe Haley and John can share. Currently, Charlotte is not right now doing um, in-person chapel services. Uh, probably just, hopefully, hopefully just this semester, but uh, we'll see what next semester holds. But we do encourage our students to participate online um, with the streams coming from Hamilton. And here in Jacksonville, we actually have a student-led chapel. Um, and but it's it's we call it chapel, but um, we we have a council that select a few students, and before their classes, they're able to kind of share devotionally um, each week. So that is something that we have instituted here uh, because we want to be able to create spaces where our students can be able to put into practice. Right, some of the things that they are uh, learning in seminary. So that is something that we're doing out here. And I'll go ahead and answer Lydia's question because I just read it. Is it an option to have a focus and play therapy in the counseling program, or is it just the one class? It is just the one class. Um, however, you can take 
uh, and your counseling electives if you want to take classes geared more towards youth or um, some, I think we have like one marriage and family course and, and things like that, more family oriented courses. You can choose electives around those, um, but we don't have a focus in it. Great question. Also, this might be our last, my last plug for our website, but and probably not. But if you go on our website on the first on the admissions page, um, there is like a why Gordon Conwell series. Um, there's also just a ton of videos on there. Um, if you really just want to hear students or faculty staff um, talk about Gordon Conwell and our specific programs, it really is an awesome resource that our Facebook, our YouTube, so many things that um, we just want to make sure we plug so that y'all don't have to just hear us talk. Um, you can hear plenty of other people's experiences. I can make a quick plug too. We do have a virtual preview day coming up in a couple of weeks. So please do sign up for that to learn more about the school and have a chance to interact with some more of us on the admissions team and also from other departments. Um, that should be a fun way to just share a little bit more about Gordon Conwell and uh, about life as a student and also hear from faculty and staff. So yeah, definitely register for that. And it will look different than just Zoom. Um, there will be a Zoom component, but if you have Zoom fatigue, like all of us, um, we have another platform that we'll be using as well that's really interactive and you get to talk face-to-face -face with people. Um, so it's a lot of fun. It's really relaxed and a great way to learn more information. Yeah. Topia, if you're one. <laughs> We put a lot, Jordan and another one of our colleagues, uh, Brian, uh, have put in a lot of work to make sure that it's as interactive as possible. Um, you will have a good time. So definitely register for it. Um, go to our, if you go to our events page, oh, there we go. Um, Jordan put it in the chat. Listen, if you guys want to know, Jordan keeps everybody on, on task, okay? He's the man. Um, but definitely click on the link, register for preview day. Um, you'll also get a day reminder, day of reminder. So, um, you know, we're going to make sure that we do all we can to make sure that you guys have the tools that you need. Um, but yeah, it'll be interactive, asking questions. There'll be presentations done from all of the campuses. Um, you'll hear from our MFA department, you'll hear from student life. Um, which I'm so excited to uh, have them there. You'll hear from um, our dean and co cohorts and things like that, people who are interested in doing doctorates through us. So you'll hear, you'll get a much wider presentation of, of who we are, not just admissions. Um, and yes, we will have some of our uh, faculty there, which is always a good time because uh, they're amazing at what they do. Uh, without them, we would not be able to give this world-class education here. Onward. So we are definitely excited to be able to do that. So uh, as we're wrapping up, um, I would love, um, I hate to put you on the spot here, Jordan, just love you so much. If you would love to close us out in prayer. Yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to pray for us. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you so much for your faithfulness, which is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I thank you that you are a sure and firm foundation in the midst of so many swirling circumstances and in the midst of so many uh, ups and downs of life, you stay the same. And we thank you for this opportunity to gather together. And I pray for each one of these uh, students as they're thinking about next steps and where you might be leading them. I pray that each of them would trust in you with all of their hearts and not lean on their own understandings, but in all their ways, may they acknowledge you because you are the one who makes their path straight. I pray that you would give them wisdom and discernment as they think about the future and that you would continue to equip them for the ministry that you're calling them to. We thank you for this time together and I pray that you bless each of them this day in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Have a wonderful day. Thank you all. Take care, everyone.